will say that there are lots of people on this app that know what they're talking about, but mostly people don't know what they're talking about. Now, there are some channels on here that talk about how to discharge debt. And I haven't used these methods, but from all the receipts that they're posting, I'm sure that it works. So do your own research. But this video is about what I'm doing. And what I've been doing is I've been leaning shit. <laughs> so first of all, in order to lean shit legally, you must own your Sesta QV Trust, your all caps name. You must own your birth certificate. You must claim it all back. That's all done through a UCC1 financing statement. Also, you need to and create, uh, incorporate a security agreement in that financing statement. And the security agreement is very important, the way it's worded and what it references. Also, you have to do a common law copyright on your name. You must do a legal notice and demand. And you have to incorporate all of these documents in your UCC1 financing statement when you lien your name. In addition, there's lots of other documents you need to fill out, the SS4, uh, the Form 56, making, uh, well, this is debatable. I've heard people say don't do this, but making Janet Yellen the fiduciary of the account. I've heard people say don't do that, but I've seen people do it and have tremendous results. So, you know, that's speculative. But I've been doing this information, researching this information for over 12 years longer than that it's been about 15 years since 07 really um and i've heard lots of different people the information that's coming out these days is is very eye-opening and it's uh it's in alignment with the time space that we're in be it all is being revealed everything is being revealed the highest forms of truth are being revealed People's true nature are being revealed, be it family members, spouses, friends, co-workers, all of their true nature is being revealed. And you'll see that the information that's coming out now is uh, very unique because it hasn't been quite spoken about the way that it is these days. But my point is, once you've done this, you've uh, followed all these steps, that I've mentioned here. Now you have legal recourse to lien anything that has your name on it because you've copywritten your name, you've leaned your name. I, I leaned my name for a hundred million dollars. So I also put a a hundred million dollar bond on deposit with the Treasury Department. And that is accruing interest at two percent annually. So once you've done all this, you can lean things that have your name on it. So if you have a court case, lean the case number. The case number is tied to a financial account. It's a QCIP number. The case number is a QCIP number that's tied to your bond, AKA your birth certificate, all tied to your SESTA QV trust. So they created this account using your information that you currently own because you leaned it. Once you lean that shit, the case is dead in the water. Just based on my experience, based on pure logic, right? So a lot of these folks are telling you to discharge the penal sum, discharge the case. Um, and, and there's there's various different methods that I've heard throughout the years on how to discharge the case. Uh, but I, instead of doing all that shit, uh, I'm leaning shit. I'm, I'm leaning everything that has my name on it and I'm claiming it. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> That's got my name on it. It's mine. Oh, you want to use my name? Check out my legal demand. My legal notice and demand, it says that if you're going to violate any of these 
itemizations outlined on my legal notice and demand, it's a $2 million fine. And it accrues interest every day that it's not paid. So go ahead, violate my rights, but I have legal recourse now and I can't get in trouble for it. A lot of the people will get in trouble for placing liens on public officials if they haven't corrected their status because you're not a secured party. If you're not a secured party, you're still a minor. They own your account. They own everything through claims, contract law. And this is how they get you to be subservient is they wrap you up in adhesion contracts through coercion and you're contracting with these folks. And in reality, it's all a debt collection. It's all a tax, as Gene Keating would say, it's all a tax. So I started leaning everything. I lean my car, I lean my registration number, I lean my license plate, I lean my my case numbers, I lean my name, I lean everything that's got my name on it, I'm leaning it. I own it. It's mine. <laughs> it's mine, damn it. So if you go using my name without my consent, it's a $2 million fine. And if you don't pay that fine, then I have the right to lien you. And then I, I go start snatching up assets. So do your own research. I don't encourage anybody to take these steps without doing your own research. But I thought I'd throw that out there. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Quit. Simply look back through his comments and mine. I finally figured out how to shut up these bootlickers. Ask them. You can't debate Supreme Court holdings because they do not know the difference or how to interpret legalese and English language. Quit. How to shut them down. Quit. Simply ask them why does all courts, all of them, refer to you in your all capital letter name from ab initio, from the first letter of the contract, from the first letter of the summons, from the first letter of the traffic citation, everything. Everything they refer to you in is the all capital letter name. Why do they not refer to you in your proper name the way you sign it, the way you spell it? It shuts them down because everything is fucking contract and commerce. Title 28 USC 3002 section 15A, the United States Federal Corporation, BNC, every city, state, and county, and police department is a subsidiary of that parent corporation. Shuts them down immediately because they ain't got a fucking clue how to respond. They misinterpret and misunderstand Supreme Court holdings because they don't know the definitions of words such as person. But I can't get elicit another response from him since I started asking why from ab initio does all courts refer to you in your all capital letter name? He just quit. Because <laughs> he knows he's portraying bullshit. Perpetrating bullshit. The English language and Black's Law are two totally different things. Judges, the courts, speak a different language than we do. It's not English. It's legalese. It's another language. Ambiguity. And people like this cannot decipher the difference between legalese and the common tongue, the English language. Imbeciles. <laughs> The fair warning thing I give everybody is like I said, it's one. It's it's simple. I'll read it real quick because it's simple. I and then you make your name. Gave no entity the right to administrate my property. So it's like I, whatever your name is, Bob Johnson, gave no entity, you know, known as the DHR, the right to administrate my property. So little old ladies like this, then they're trying to get their grandkids back from like CPS. 
So this is how I sent it to some lady. But you could use it for a car. You could use it for a tow truck, you know, tow your car away. You could do it for anything. You just say, I, Bob Johnson, gave no entity the right to administrate my property. Number two, I say that, you know, baby Johnson is my property. This is what I was doing with little old ladies. I say that blank is my property. Number three, I say that no man or woman will make a claim saying my claim is untrue. Number four, I want my property returned to me. There you go. Number five, said properties to be totally under my control, post haste, you know, within three days, whatever time limit you want to give them. And then number six, it just says, I will charge the wrongful holder of said property X amount of dollars for every, you know, whatever you want to do, every minute, every day, said property is not returned, starting on the 22nd day after they've received this summons and this suit, uh, you know, see attached claim. So it's simple. You just make it simple. You just say, I gave nobody the right to administrate my property. Number two, I said that's my property. Number three, nobody, no man or woman is going to come and open court and claim that my claim is untrue. Four, I want my property returned to me. Five, I want it done in like two days or less. And six, I'm going to start charging you money. Twenty, Because you, you're supposed to give them 21 days to answer a lawsuit. So on day 22, I'm going to start charging you. Because within that 21 days, they, they, it gives them the opportunity to try to make a settlement with you on a private side. And the 21 well, days gives them time to make a settlement. Right. It gives, them, it gives them, you know, time to make a settlement with you on a private side. So then day 22, you're going to start charging. Uh, okay. You'll see in court. And you're going to move it, you're going to move it before a, a, a trial by jury. And you're going to get you back. Boy, I mean, they get tough down here. They're rough. I mean, they won't accept any paperwork or anything. I mean, that you well, can hardly true. even. That's why you, know, you said. You can't believe nothing that these guys say, you know. Well, that's why you got to make it incredibly simple. Peace and blessings. So on the back of your contract, you will see, notice, any holder of this consumer credit contract is subject to all claims and defenses, which the debtor could assert against the seller of goods or services. Therefore, you can assert the holder rule to the finance company. What are they talking about? They know this already. They know that if you take them to arbitration, they have to show up. I don't even know why they would tell you that. Okay? Peace. I'm going to make this quick. I only got three minutes, so I'm going to get right to it. First of all, just for clarification earlier, if you look at our, our background here, Collier County is in all capital letters. You look at the flag over there, all three of them are in gold trim. According to the national flag, Title IV, Section 1 and 2, a yellow fringe is not authorized. It's a commercial entity. So when we did our Pledge of Allegiance, we did it to the commercial entity, not to the true American Republic, just so you know. The reason I'm here today is we strictly uh, moved here to this community a couple years ago, almost three now, to investigate the county for corruption. We are welcomed here by open hands in the very beginning by Alfie Oaks, Patrick Dearborn, Bill, everybody. Once we started bringing out this information, I was blackballed by the Republican Party and everybody within the situation because, again, there's a lot of interactions that are taking place. The first interaction that I'd like to bring to the attention here and finalize is with the county clerk. Failure to operate outside the corporate structure, which violates her oath of office she signed. Failure to perform her duties as, as dual roles as a corporate entity and a constitutional officer. Failure to perform recording documents, a violation of federal statutes, 18 U.S.C. 2071, which I did sue the county as well as her for. Instead of moving it outside of the county, which they should have done because there's a conflict of interest, they dismissed the case locally here in the county. So, failure to perform her duties under the Homestead Act of domicile, giving people a choice, failure to perform FOIA requests. This is the area of the Sunshine Law. When we asked for the names of each and every individual that works for the county clerk, position, salary. This is our response. As custodian of the public records for the clerk of the circuit court and comptroller for Collier County, I'm in receipt of your public records request. In response to your request, I have forwarded to a complete organizational chart of the clerk of the circuit court comptroller. She sent us an organizational chart with just the positions with no names, no salaries, and said that she did not have to do this due to the fact that it was under a security statute. 
Okay. Well, we did the same thing in several other counties throughout the state of Florida. Because again, because we sued her, I feel I'm being discriminated against because they're not bringing forth actual facts. So we asked Escambito County, Hillsborough County, Lee County, Manatee County, Miami-Dade County, which is the largest in our state, Pinellas County. Each and every one of them sent what we requested with no issues, no problems, no BS. So I'm here today to make you folks aware because you are operating as a commercial entity. I am now a secure party creditor, which allows me to face and put liens against the county if I choose to do so, just so you know. And the only way you can take those liens away is through a court process. And we're gonna be utilizing all of the records that you've been doing here for the last two years. I've accepted each and every one of your oaths except for the new two people that have been here. I'm accepting your oath of office today on a public record. You will also receive information directed to your home. So again, I'm asking for the immediate resignation of our county clerk for You're fraud right, and so forth. Thank you. Your next speech. In here, get in here, get in here, get in here, get in here. I'm about to expose a big secret. I'm about to expose a big secret right now. Get in here, get in here. So if you look at this document, it says Donald J. Trump plaintiffs versus the United States. Who is he going up against, right? You think this is the whole United States, but no, it's actually immigrants. Immigrants are suing us on our own land to say we've done something wrong to them. Now, first of all, we got to understand the word colony. Colony was called states, okay? You have to understand that mentally, do not take that out your head. The original state were New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The original states, okay, were first 13 British colonies. Okay, so not talking about the whole so-called states, it's colonies. Okay, the colonies are suing us. That's 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 it. That's one thing you're gonna understand is the colonies suing us. That's it. Now, if you look at this for a reference, look at this for a reference. Let me explain it to you very clearly. So you can say these peoples versus Secretary of State. So she the secretary for the colony. That's all she is, right? She the secretary for the colony, okay. This is who they suing, the secretary of the colony. Now, if you notice, it says the course of appeal of the state, right, of Michigan, not the Michigan of state. It's the state of Michigan. So you see how they mirror the real peoples and still pretend to be of us, but they are a separate entity. So they are literally... Appeals of the colony. Remove the word state and just put the word colony. Now, if you look at this very closely, see this seal? It does not have the word state. And there's a good reason why it doesn't have the word state. Okay? It got the seal of Michigan because it's not a foreigner court. It's actually our court. Okay? You have to keep that in mind. Of the Republic. Okay? Of the Republic. This is why it's called a district. Now you're about to find out who actually owns America. Who owns the land according to the Iroquois Constitution? Women shall be considered the progenitor of the nations. So women's actually own the court. So yes, there is a special hack that you can use whenever you're trying to get approved for something. Apartments, cars, houses. Okay, ride with me on this hacking journey. So, here are a few tips that I want you to take note of, pause to read, and let's get to it. So, the first thing you're going to do is go to Google. You're going to Google Equifax Lock and Alert. You're going to Google this because if you notice, if you, when you first try to do this, 
they try to get you to the wrong website. There are two different websites here and one of them they want you to pay for. We want the free one. Lockandalert.equifax.com And this is what it looks like. You can click sign up into your personal information and you will have an account with a login. It's really that simple, but you have to know what to look for. That's the hack. The next one is TransUnion True Identity. That's what it's called. They also have other things that they want you to pay for. We want the free identity protection. It's 100% free, y'all. So if you see something that says that they you want they want you to pay for it, no. Uh-uh. Oh. So this is what you want. You want True Identity. That is the one that you're going to fill out the information for and sign up. And then once you have that and that login, you're good. Experian is not free. This one is going to cost you about $25 a month if you really want to protect your credit and have no one be able to pull it. But you basically go to this credit lock by Experian and sign up. As you can see, it's $24.99. Another option is you can just freeze your report. That's going to take a little bit longer to unfreeze, but this is a free way to do it. Back to the notes that I have. Then what you're going to do is you're going to start your research. You need to figure out whichever lender you're looking at or whichever apartment, whichever house, any of those things, figure out which credit bureau they are, they pull or they want. So if you have all of them locked, what you do is you go in there and you ask them, which one do you pull? Whichever one they pull, that's the one you unlock just so that they can pull it and lock that thing right back. This will prevent you from having multiple hard pulls whenever you apply for a car, if you choose to go to the dealership or an apartment, any of those things, because you can control where they pull. Another hack is that if one of your credit reports is better than the other, say TransUnion is your best score, you can find a lender that only pulls TransUnion and they will only look at that. Follow me for more tips. I'm back with part three of three on how that contract paid for your car. So we already went over a consumer credit contract. The fact that it was an evidence of indebtedness. The fact that it was a financial asset. Now we're here with the last part on what they treated that contract as. That evidence of indebtedness as. Purchase or evidence of indebtedness is payable on demand or readily tradable. It was payable on demand because that contract was just as good as cash as soon as you signed it and got that vehicle. Treatment as payment. In general, a bond or other evidence of indebtedness is here and after in this section referred to as an obligation issued by any person and payable on demand shall be treated as a payment in the year received, not as installment obligations payable in future years. In addition, an obligation issued by a corporation or a government or political subdivision thereof. So your financial institution is stealing from you, okay? Just like the dealership stole from you when they said that the your financial institution or the creditor, really the dealership is the creditor, but we go over that in the down payment class, um, stole from you when they said that the financial institution required a down payment, but it was really the dealership. They're all.